Okay, um, so I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the lands of the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation. Um, I would also like to extend my respects to the Elders past and present and any First Nations people tuning in today. Um, sovereignty was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so hey guys, I'm Ange. <laughs> Um, and we're here today to talk about the incredible TV show Motherland Port Salem and the queer representation on the show. Um, joining me today from Vancouver is one of the core four. Um, she lights up the screen as rail collar, the broody mycelium conduit um, with a weakness for dark hair and trouble. It's the gorgeous, <laughs> the outstanding, the radiant. I don't have enough adjectives. It's Taylor. <laughs> How Thank are you, you Taylor? <laughs> so nice to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, so we'll just jump straight into it. So in Australia, the first season of Motherland is available on Disney Plus, um, but we got to watch the second season the same day on Foxtel, so we're all caught up. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Oh, really? um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, and for a lot of our LOTL listeners, um, would you mind giving a really quick one rundown of the show and of your character? It's very hard to condense the Motherland, but I will try my best. You can thank Elliot for that. Um, I'd say the best summarization I can give is um, back during the Salem witch trials in our and how it's affected our modern day America. It was said that the witches came forward to the American government and said, essentially, if you stop killing our people, we will fight and win your wars for you. And this concept caught on globally. And so the way that technology has developed has been drastically different because our war times were drastically different and they were fought with uh, Wiccan, Wiccan work. Um, and so where we fall on this is, um, and myself individually, I play Rael, uh, one of the individuals that we follow navigating being conscripted at a very young age and, uh, and her journey with that. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're going to talk more about season two uh, because that's sort of where my head's at and I know that's probably where you're more <laughs> focused at the moment. My um, head is everywhere all at once. <laughs> I'm um, trying to be season three, but I'm still on the pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so season two sort of picks up straight from where season one left off. Um, and the growth that we've seen from where Rael since uh, the pilot is massive. Like it's exponential. Um, she's just transforming in front of audience size and that's absolutely your credit. Like you have just like, um, how would you describe that sort of shift from Rael from the angry um, sort of uh, stuck girl that you see in the pilot to this more confident, more um, full young woman that we see sort of towards the season two finale? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can accredit it to her finding purpose and finding a place where she belongs. I mean, following the loss of her, her mother, I mean, not to give any spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but- It's um, all good. It's, I think this is gonna be a fairly spoiler heavy, heavy <laughs> yeah. interview, so it's all good. Yes. Um, I mean, it is a, it is a, it's a very pivotal plot point uh, in her journey. Um, so, you know, following the grief of that, her mother being an idol and being the only connection she has with the Wiccan world because her father is a civilian or mortal and he doesn't uh, doesn't carry the blood that, um, you know, I think she really felt like she lost touch with that part of her ancestry and um, she just felt she felt condemned to the same fate, you know, working her entire purpose and value away at the at the expense of someone who doesn't care for for the lives of others you know so she feels stuck um she's when we first meet her she's full kamikaze she's ready to just end it now you know and she doesn't have a sense of belonging and she's very confused and and scared and it comes off you know she uses the vehicle of anger to communicate everything which is uh, very much a play i think on toxic masculinity and just trying to keep that stoicism and not being able to not allowing yourself to be vulnerable because uh, because she's been burned and because she's been hurt, um, she doesn't give that to people anymore because it gives people the power to take that from her. Yeah. So that absolutely makes sense. Yeah. So when you follow her journey and and getting her power back and and having the understanding that giving yourself and giving pieces of yourself to other people is is not where you lose your power and that is entirely um, 
up up to you in in your journey and, and finding your own purpose and you know she she's now a, a massive uh, weapon to the to the american army and just people who, who genuinely love her and care about her the way that she is um and and would lay themselves lay down their lives essentially for her and the feelings mutual and having that sense of community uh and that sense of drive and having a goal i think is is really what's brought her to this stage yeah absolutely no that completely makes sense um what you said about um finding like feeling more powerful is really interesting because mm -hmm. in in um the episode with the riot when she quotes Scylla uh you would think that she was taking that Scylla would have sort of worked to take some of that power away but re she really she was saying no that pain helps to make me stronger yeah she took it back I mean when we when we first see how much she she's grieving Scylla initially but then comes to learn about you know how she's been lied to I think that was that was that pain and that that dig is really what pushed her and you know she went into full breakup mode which i <laughs> I, I know we can all kind of yeah relate to where you know you start working out a bunch and you're you're not you know you're doing that for you you're getting your power back so on a more life and death uh grandiose platform is where we find rail doing the same thing yeah. taking her power back and, uh, and reconnecting to what it means uh, to be Wiccan and the divine feminine that, that follows that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think that was really interesting with her hair, right? How it made her, there was a lot more femininity in it in, um, towards the end that of season two. Cause there wasn't a lot we could do. She's, she's not, she's not very, you know, she doesn't wear a lot of makeup or, or jewelry there. We wanted to find some small physical way to represent her growth. And we think that that's important that she's changing physically, yeah. um, you know the whole pathetic fallacy thing where your environment matches what you're experiencing and um so that was a pitch that myself and and um i guess our aesthetic team had and uh, it, yeah it ended up working really well with her journey and we we wanted to use the braids i guess as some sort of symbolism as, as to where her loyalty is yep. lying at the, um at the time of the arc yep. in the story no, that, mm -hmm. absolutely and i think that absolutely came across um, okay, so because of COVID, production sort of kept everyone very separate. Um, so were you still able to find those, like, because I know you've talked before about all of your, like, love languages being physical touch, <laughs> which is so cute. Um, were you still able to find those little moments of connection with your castmates? Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, myself and I'd say especially Jess, <laughs> anytime there was, especially, you know, when we're playing it out, anytime there was a point where she could hold us or um, touch us in any way. She yeah. took full advantage of it. Like over, but they're like, maybe Tally wouldn't be so, and Jess was like, no, 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 she would. She would be <laughs> clinging for dear life. And, <laughs> and you're like, okay, this is Jess, this is Tally. But you know, um, I guess, I think it's episode eight or so where we all reconnect at the at the spree house and she kind of comes off her mission and it's she meets myself and Amalia. Abigail and Tony there at that um oh I see Tony but uh Adil <laughs> no I, I'm good <laughs> yes uh that she she kind of grabs us and she starts kissing us on either sides of our faces yeah they condensed that it went on for quite a bit longer um while we were shooting but yeah we definitely took full advantage um and you know they were we had a really great really great really strong health and safety team um which is great because had we gone unpoliced the affection would have been rampant uh so uh they they kept us safe but obviously they um we we found time for um quality time and yeah. and physical affection just because we're all so much that way in the yeah. safest safest forms possible but yeah yeah well we you fought well, an entire season of a tv show in the middle of a pandemic so like you did really well and there, there wasn't any at zero point where we shut it down. So I think there was about 90 to 100 productions shooting at the time that we were. So 30% of productions, I think, in the world were able to get their finances in and get back on the ground running mid-pandemic. 
um, as compared to post-pandemic. So 30% came back, and I think we were the only one shooting in Vancouver that didn't get shut down to a positive case wow. for the entirety of shooting. And we shot for, we had a shorter camera hours too, so it was, it was quite spread out. So I think between prep and, and wrap, it was somewhere between I think six to eight months, which normally it's, we shoot for about five months. Yep. So yeah, it That's was amazing. a long time and yeah, they kept, they did a brilliant job. That's so cool. That's awesome. Um, are there any sort of, I know you've done a lot of interviews, but are there any sort of like little funny stories or little memorable moments that you'd like to share from filming season two? <laughs> oh man. Um, a lot of them are probably when it's like, we're really cold it's dark and we're hungry and we're like <laughs> sitting in a warm up tent and just being ridiculous at three in the morning. Um, I'm trying to think of one specifically. Um, okay. So <laughs> I thought of one. Um, so there was this one point where we had to, I think it was an over, over top shot where we're, we're kind of coming up to this cabin. It's before we have this big fight in the cabin yeah. and we shot, pieces of of that scene in the cabin all in different areas um at this giant paintball place actually wild yeah so so they used different cabins for different things depending on what we were shooting so it was kind of it was a bit of a maze in there um but they set up a, a few more shrubs and it's there's a lot of trees right because it's a paintball place so you have to hide behind things and we were trying to work out this extremely choreographed mission impossible thing where we were all running and ducking and hiding behind trees and it, it, obviously in the edit it was much more condensed and it looked really fluid but it was all before we break into the um one of the cabins and we see the the dead people yeah. in there yeah um so leading up to that oh my god we must have spent a good hour being like okay if you go this way and our director was like placing us all in different directions and Jess and I kept smashing into each other when we we're supposed to be crossing and taking each other out and they were like okay this isn't supposed to be dangerous like it's just supposed to be cool so it, it took way too long to get it <laughs> get into work but Jess and I clunked noggins a couple of times before we before we got it done but yeah that's, fun little... that's so funny I know exactly what scene you're talking about <laughs> and when when I was watching watch again, it, we narrowly avoid each other. Well, it's brutal. Favorite, one of my favorite things watching that scene is watching Amalia like sort of sneaking in behind all of you. <laughs> like you were all the like, oh, boy, she... for that was so hard too. Yeah. yeah, we all kept smacking into each other. And the, <laughs> there's a few times where because we have to do a wind strike to open the door where we'd like just be running up to the, the door and they'd get the sh shot wrong and they just Fling, fling it open as we're like tripping up the stairs or just would do it a couple times and it wouldn't open and we're like just give her one more go tally it was i hope they make a blooper reel because it was great we had a, we had season two was so fun to make and it was experiences like those with the crew we had that remind me of why we do what we do and why we love it so dearly it was just season two was beautiful it was so fun i'll take it with me everywhere it was also like visually so stunning like it, visually it was a beautiful season like motherland has this tendency oh. of just being beautiful at all times like yeah. every shot is for some reason gorgeous like whether it's the lighting or like the people in it or like anything it's always <laughs> so beautiful um <laughs> Hey. He snuck that in there There's the people in it you know That's, you know uh um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so <laughs> Sorry but no, that. you're you're right. I mean, aesthetically, our team is brilliant, and we we had uh, two gentlemen work very very hard um, as a team for our uh, cinematic style, and yeah. yeah, killed it. Beautiful. Absolutely. And we, what's funny is we're we're a bit li we were a bit limited, so I don't know if you know what atmosphere is, or basically those fog machines that you yeah. see around Halloween time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we use those constantly in in film just to sort of get that very picturesque uh, lighting because it holds the light. So how you get those beams of light, you know, through the trees and um, yeah, we have a special effects team that works really hard with the, with the camera crew and with our DOP to, and lighting to, to get this to work. And um, we didn't have that in season two because of COVID. Um, 
wanted to rule out anything that because it, it, it is moisture in the air. So yeah. to keep us safe, we weren't sure how it was going to affect us. We didn't have enough information. So we just ruled it out completely and to still make it look the way that they did was I'm, I'm so proud of the team. Like yeah. we I was it just it can it has the tendency to make things look a lot more flat or a little too high def. Like it really puts a soft filter over it when you're using it. So the, the work they did was they worked twice as hard. It's impeccable. It's was, brilliant. Yeah, like it's it was gorgeous. <laughs> um, OK, so thinking about those little moments of closeness, you've sort of already answered this, but we'll touch on it uh, again. Um, we like you could absolutely tell that you guys were all just itching to just be like, uh, like on top of each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> the one that I think of the think of the most is that sort of in the finale when you're by the bus, that hug with Amalia. Um, there's so much relief on your face, like on both of your faces in that shot. You both look like, yes, this is where I want to be. <laughs> oh my god! Um, was that sort of like how you were feeling in that moment? Very emblematic. Yeah. Um, yes, because we we did refrain from a lot of contact and it, it's not only that like our schedules really supported that concept because again we were on set together for a few days and four just to shoot the riot yeah. um and that was the most i've seen of her so i you know i, I really missed her and last or i guess yeah last year uh shooting season one it was drastically different because half of my time was divided between her and then the other girls so um so i was really missing that component which it was lovely because in season two we got a bunch of beautiful new faces and the, you know the extension of our coven yeah. but um i definitely missed Dimitri and i missed amalia a lot yeah. uh very sorely um but gratefully we, we had more time with lynn which was fucking awesome she's yeah. one of the most brilliant people alive i can't say enough great things about her. She's such an idol for me. Um, so it was great to have, have more screen time with her and personal time with her. And uh, yeah, so what you're seeing on screen is definitely like, <laughs> it was very honest. Um, we were really grateful to get back into the same space with each other, uh, especially after upholding this tension where, like I said, we're all very physically affectionate. So when we're playing that tension where you know our hands can't really touch or there isn't that relief of just oh, being just familiar with your yeah. person you know so we really played with the tension of that so that when it came ourselves and everyone else who'd been holding their breath was like oh finally you know <laughs> so yeah it was it was very much a release of tension and we we had a lot of fun playing with it and it was worth it and so fun um to, to get to that place. And now I'm just looking forward to actually seeing them have a tiny little, tiny little pieces of happiness and yes. stability. And I say tiny because it's motherland. And so you'll yeah. get like 2% stability and 98% chaos. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm really, really going to be present and thoroughly enjoy those tiny little pieces of stability when we get them. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, those tiny moments are some of the most beautiful as well. I think on Twitter, I've seen a lot of people gifing a moment where you like half stepped in front of Scylla or Rails half stepped in front of Scylla while it's sort of looking like you're sort of like protecting. Um, and every time, I, like every time I see it, everyone's just like, oh my God, I can't look at this tiny moment of Rail protecting Scylla. And it's like, that is so cute. Um, yeah, so it's I think those... instinctually do though. I think with yeah. your person, you know, it's just it's there's nothing you wouldn't do for your person, and that that's you know, still is like family to her. It's it's one of the only people that she's really loved that way. I mean, since her mom, and so she knows the deepest parts of her, and these people around her have seen her like hungry and tired and sad and elated and angry and you know these people know her so deeply that it's she she really has a sense of family and i don't think there's much you wouldn't wouldn't do to protect people yeah. with such a mutual love like that absolutely absolutely um okay so we've seen Scylla create her own work mostly for rail um so the s which is amazing um and morrigan's whisper which was 
outstanding. I love it. Yes, um, it's I'm, so I'm cool. Here with you. Such Absolutely, a so cool. Um, if you could create a piece of work, anything, um, what would it be? Oh, you're gonna be so disappointed with my answer. Um, oh, okay. Absolutely, I would. Um, I would probably choose. Okay, I'm really lazy. Like I have a Taurus moon, so this is really where you're gonna see. <laughs> So it would definitely be to do something like assist me in daily mundane tasks. Like suddenly just, I take forever to get ready. I don't mean to, but I'm always running late. It's being conscious of time is such an issue with me. I'm always like just on time or a few minutes late. Um, <laughs> so anything that I can do to move that process along, like have my coffee made or, or just be done and, and showered and have my teeth brushed and change my outfits and you know, it would be something, something like that, or making food, you know, like really think oh, bewitched. Yeah. You know, on Paul Kidman in, yeah. in the yeah. remake, just, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, the only issue with that is like, I guess in the world of motherland, I'd say work is generally reserved for things that are a little more sacred, it seems. Um, or I guess in terms of physical safety or, or terms of ritual. Um, but I mean, I guess if I were to go some middle ground, Teleportation would be really cool, which I think would also help me with time conservation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it could be used for life and death too, you know? Definitely. So I, I think that's where you could milk it either for a vacation or for a mission, you know? Just suddenly brief you're in Mexico. <laughs> then you're in the terrain, you know, fighting what you gotta do, but then you just, you know, over to Thailand and have a quick coconut on the beach and do your damn thing, you know? That sounds perfect. <laughs> What would you do? Oh God, uh, <laughs> I would probably, my cat is a menace. He like runs around and is absolutely insane. So I would probably have some kind of work that would just be like, stop it. <laughs> just, just a stop it spell. Just be like, stop it. <laughs> I would use it on people a lot more than so I would on <laughs> stop it. Yeah, just mute <laughs> no, mute exactly that's absolutely it just like off button <laughs> yeah uh, um is ollie there sorry that's the du sorry <laughs> don't mind me um, let me sorry. just I, I think so my mom's visiting right now because i'm just moving back up from um Kelowna, but she might have taken her out for a walk but i'm gonna go check if she's there ollie Hi, baby. Say hi, Stinky. Oh my God. She's not for a walk. Thirty. She's in a horn. She's so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love so her ears. <laughs> Floppy little ears. Say hi. Oh, hello, Ollie. <laughs> oh my God. Your mom, let go of me. She's just so mad. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Must you stop it spell on me. <laughs> Hi, Ollie. It's okay, it's all I need. Sorry about that. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was literally, I was talking to my partner last night and I was like, I'm so excited to talk to Taylor, but she's got such a cute dog. And at <laughs> some point. <laughs> These are just becoming Ollie's interviews. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'm going to divert. Um, so, still talking about animals though. Um, so. Love it with uh Scylla has sort of got a crow as her familiar now with that morrigan's whisper thing and nick day's got, nick has got her bats um what animal do you reckon would rail and sort of the unit have as their familiars okay i'm gonna go through the coven tally has a hamster <laughs> like like cocoa color you know like same colors her hair yep um abigail would have like I don't know, some like a hawk or something. <laughs> Super cool. Like, of course she would. Um, I'm gonna say M. They're gonna have like a, an extremely abnormally intelligent baby monkey. Okay. Like, like the one from Night in the Museum. <gasps> kind of really mis mischievous. Yeah. And just like sits on their shoulder all the time. Um. Rael, Rael would have something, I think, something that looks menacing that people are always afraid of, uh, 
but has a softer nature once you get to know them, like a snake or a spider. I also, I think something that would be able to transport underground to give messages to the mycelium. Yeah. So something like, <laughs> watch her actually just have something like a rat or something. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> something that people are afraid of because they're like, ew, <laughs> it's a cockroach. Um, Alder like cockroach sitting on her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you would. She literally would. People are like, real, really. <laughs> Um, Alder would have, like, a Black Panther, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, and if, if Rael didn't have a snake, I'm gonna say, yeah, Rael would have something more like a spider or something. Yeah. And I like, I, I liked her, I like the imagery of her with the spider when she lit the, the candle, too, yeah. I think. Sir. Um, and Akasha, I think, would also have a snake. If, if Rael didn't, I think a snake would be... Yeah, because she's she's very like, she likes to spy on people. She gives big like Scorpio energy. She's always she in the know, but she's just also a fly on the wall. But she's yeah. always acting out of the goodness of her heart or what she what she stands for. And I feel yeah. like Scorpios really stand by. Yeah, stand by um, their morals. Yeah, and then uh, Gregorio would definitely have a golden retriever because <laughs> obviously <laughs> that speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, maybe this will happen, but yeah. Yeah, nice. What would you have? What would I? Oh god. Um, I like the idea of having like a little bear, like a bear that like doesn't like sort of like a sun bear type thing, like doesn't get because I'm I'm five four. Like I don't want a bear taller than me. Yeah. I want it. I want it to just be right. <laughs> hey, I want it to just be like chilling at like shoulder height and like not aggressive, but like looks like, like you know a what I baby mean? black bear. Yeah, sort of exactly. Be careful, like, my mom might fuck your shit up. She's probably around the corner, but he's he's just fronting. Yeah, exactly that. It's just yeah. like yeah, that would that would be oh. it. <laughs> okay, for for whomever's gonna watch this, I want I want to hear what the assigned familiars would be for us i want to hear i want to hear what they have to say absolutely that's the mission that's the mission anybody on twitter uh, yeah i was gonna go. say hit, hit it up in twitter <laughs> you know where to find me okay we'll, we'll get the, we'll get them on that they'll jump on that no guys <laughs> okay um so let's think about the end of season two um rail and Scylla are together we're talking in the bus party time right um, so which characters do you think, um, out of everyone on the bus will have the most sort of tension with one another? So like, um, because you've just got such a massive range of ideologies in there. Um, yeah. it won't wow. be a shock when you're on the casino bus and someone gets mad. For some reason, I think it's going to be Abigail like snapping first, but like. Yes. <laughs> yes. At Abigail and Scylla, I really like their frenemy dynamic. Um, you know, where she's like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? And so I was like, you know, protecting my girl. And I would go like, we cool, we cool, we cool, we cool. I don't like you, but we on the I like page. her. So, yeah, we're on the same page. Um, so I like that sort of the frenemy dynamic. Um, it just, it reminds me of, you know, like when you tell your mom about someone that's wronged you and it just you can never fix it you know you start hanging out we're like actually we're best friends again or actually we're dating again and your mom's like nah i'm watching you yeah. abigail yeah. is that energy she's just yeah. very very protective over ray so yeah. i think it's that kind of thing like once you cross her it's it's really hard to earn back yeah. the respect yeah. if you have earned it at all <laughs> um but i'm also really really excited for tally and nictus dynamic they have a very interesting interpersonal relationship and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to watch the growth there and um, watch how they complement each other yeah because absolutely it's, I see a lot of mirroring but I also see um, a lot of yin, yin and yang between them and in ways that they can help each other grow to yeah. their fullest potential so I think that will be that will be very interesting um, yeah, that's something that I'm definitely most excited about. One thing I, I'm like, I've been thinking about, I'm like, you know whom I haven't seen interact a lot is uh, Adil and Scylla. And I feel like that could be a really cool friendship. Definitely. Have you seen New Girl? So, you know, like Winston and Cece? Yep. 
like that their kind of friendship where they're like on the side they're like yeah dude what's up like we're I see, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I that, just... that's like so interesting because they sort of represent like a bit of a dichotomy, right? Because Adil is sort of just coming into that, like having been, um, having taken a life, having been violent after being a pacifist, whereas Scylla yeah. sort of has been in sort of the violence realm for quite a while. Yeah, I think they have a great balance to give each other. And I also think that it would be important for them to have other connections to the group other than just their partners. So it would be nice to see that that community grow in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah that's something I've, I've given thought to and I'm just like, I wanna pick Elliot's brain. I haven't talked to him yet about season three. They've been so on lock over there and so quiet. We go to camera in like, what, two, not even less than two weeks now. Wow, okay. Yeah, so I'm so nervous. I don't know anything about season three. Um, so I'm in for as much of a surprise as y'all are, so. And I'm sure there'll be amazing surprises for everyone oh, yes. involved. I don't do it. <laughs> we Wait. trust Elliot in this house. Period. Um, okay. So, also just absolutely random, but what do you think the sort of units, you've sort of mentioned that you think that, um, oh, that, um, Anacostia is probably a Scorpio. What do you think the the zodiacs are of your of your little unit? Tally gives Pisces. She keeps giving <laughs> Pisces. <laughs> um, <laughs> Abigail. She gives like Capricorn because of I guess how important her work is to her but then also, and just like, how abrasive she is, but then you find that softness in there and it's yeah. so cute when you get it and it's so valuable when you get it. So I just said like, I think Capricorn. Um, I, I'm, I love Capricorns, I'm really close to a lot in my life and yeah. she just, that's the energy she gives. Um, Rael, Rael also kind of, I've, I've always pinned her as a Scorpio too. Just her intensity, she's so intense. And a lot of Scorpios I meet her, I find either one or the other. Like you meet them and you're like, you're a Scorpio? Cause they're like, da, 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 da. and then they have this super deep, intense emotional aspect to them. Or they read like the poster child for Scorpio where they're like, yeah, I'm broody, I'm a wallflower. And she, that's, yeah, that's what Rael is. She's like, yeah, I'm different. But really she's soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is your girl. Um, yeah. So she she gives she gives that just very very intense, yeah. uh, very intense energy. And Amalia gives. I see Amalia. Amalia actually is an Aries, but I also like I I see Scylla. We are Aries. Are you an Aries? Yeah. I'm a Sagittarius. I Aries is you know what. Yes, all day long. We we do. We're on our hood red shit all the time. Absolutely, <laughs> just chaos constant. Also, I've got yeah. a Leo moon, so I've just got the constant. Just you know what I mean. I love that. <laughs> Tyr- my sister Tyrion's an Aries, and me and her are just joined at the hip. We do all the dumb shit together. It's yeah. amazing. Um, so yeah, I think she's she gives Scorpio or Aries just that same. Kind of intensity. Um, hmm. I don't. I can't tell what Alder is. Sometimes Alder gives Virgo, but sometimes Alder gives Cancer, but like a masculine Cancer energy. Because I find a lot of a lot of people who are more masculine and they're Cancer that they they have this sense of stoicism. Like I know what's best. I I'm, and they're very intuitive, but they also, or like Gemini's can be that way too. Like I'm really close with, with both that way, but I, yeah. So where it's, and sometimes they get, and when they get checked and when they're, I guess, humbled on, on their place, it's, it's something that's really pivotal in their own journey. And I find that that's, that's a conflict that, um, yeah, masculine cancers and Gemini's give. So maybe somewhere in there even. And just like the um, the reach for for having purpose and like ma- maintaining that sense of security too. Ooh, I don't know what. Yeah, I think Anakashi would al- also kind of give Scorpio. She's really good at 
secret keeping, but she's also right or die for the people she loves and she'll yeah. she'll act out of what she thinks is moral, even you know, it doesn't regardless of where her loyalty lies. Yeah. Scorpio to me. Yeah. Amazing. That was like a super long winded explanation, but I, I got really into astrology because of this project. So Yeah. I mean, you picked the wrong part of my brain. No, absolutely <laughs> the right part of your brain. Absolutely the right part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, love it. Okay, we're going to tangent back onto the show. Yes. Sorry about that. That was completely I, my I'm fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. That was my fault. For the worst. Okay, so you and Amalia's energies just, like, blend so beautifully together. Um, and after not spending so much time in season two, uh together i'm sure you're looking forward to being able to work on that dynamic as we've sort of worked with as we've sort of talked about um is there anything in particular you're sort of looking forward to playing with in terms of that growth that that growth that like because elliot seems to love that like divine interconnectedness and you know the yeah it's just it's anything you're looking forward to growing together yeah i mean I, I'm, it's everything I can hope for for their for their emotional connection to grow stronger. But I think with that, seeing seeing fate interject a little bit with with their work and finding connection there, um, just because now that I mean, she Scylla's taught Rael everything that I guess that she knows about uh, being an Ekro, and um, and now that's quite closely tied to her gift and her connection to the mycelium. So. I think finding ways to conjoin their work together and and seeing that power couple yeah. like in every sense of the word yeah. I think it'd be really cool to see to see that team up cuz um you know we're seeing that with Tally and, and Nikta and then the union of Earth and Sky with Abigail and, Ad and Adele yeah. so it would be it would be neat to see to see that connect yeah. I think that yes. aspect yeah, I'm so looking forward to seeing that like union of Earth and Sky. Elliot loves fate, right? Like he, he loves, does. He loves. I fate. do too. I have you. I fuck with it heavy. So absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm excited, and I I have so many questions for him, and like I have this, I have this. This is not. This isn't even a theory. This is just like a a hope from Taylor. Um, because I mean because it's essentially meant to be our last season. I'm like I'm wondering how they're gonna. I know, I can't even, but like, however it ends, whenever it does end, um, I'm hoping that Tally can really use her, or I guess, uniform her power to, and grow her power to, to sort of see the future. And it would be really cool if she kind of had like an Alice in Twilight moment, where we see the fates of, of all these characters and where they end up going. And I'm like, Elliot, Put rail on a, and so on a ducky farm with with the with the little babies <laughs> and then you know what I mean. Yep. So I'm like, I'm hoping that we can see their happiness and 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 see where they go without dragging the storyline to the. You know what I mean? Yep. Where yep. I'm hoping that Tally can sort of visualize that and grow her power to, to seeing the future, or or someone can, you know. Yep. And just I think that would be an awesome way to well with a bang but i don't know i don't know what's in elliot's brain there's some crazy shit in there let me tell you <laughs> so, there, there has to be enough for at least two more seasons because you're you're going to streaming so don't 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 even worry about it we are okay. <laughs> manifesting it absolutely manifesting it every day um <laughs> so um sort of talking more about um, queer representation on screen. Um, I can, with absolute confidence, say that Rayla is one of, if not the most complex queer relationship on screen right now. Um, it's not tokenistic, it's really well-rounded. There's a lot of, there's just so much going on, um, despite it being in this sort of very fantastical world. Um, how important was it for you to keep the relationship feeling really genuine and really whole especially with how much pain both characters have experienced i mean i mean as an actor i think that's that's just the goal regardless so i, I think that's what really took me aback was just i i didn't realize how poor the the lack of representation was and and what you're saying it, it being tokenistic because 
you know, it's just I, I see people kind of throwing crumbs everywhere and I'm just like, oh, well, everyone, everyone's doing it, you know, and it's but they're just kind of they're like, oh, well, we'll, we'll give this payoff to, to these people and these, this payoff to these people. And, you know, we have an Asian person, we have a black person, we have a gay person. We, we've done our work. Yeah, we're the, divi the diversity bingo card. You know, so to it, it didn't it didn't dawn on me, and that's where I realized like I I wasn't doing my work, and I wasn't giving myself the education that I should have been until I saw the reaction online and and people reaching out to me and sending me messages, and I I had no idea what Elliot's work and and I mean the entirety of our crew how it would impact people and. And how important it is to see yourself in media and see yourself on screen and and I guess I mean like I I never really had that problem you know like I had Cinderella who was me like I looked I looked just like her I have blonde hair and blue eyes and you know and she gets everything she ever wanted and you know so it was just like it it didn't it didn't dawn on me because it's it wasn't a problem that I suffered from. Or I guess that it wasn't, it was something that I was blind to. And so that was, that was a really pivotal point for just what, what I take on now as a creator and um, what my mission is and my message is as, as, you know, having a platform where there are people that, that listen and, and we talk to each other as a team. So um, yeah, it, it's definitely changed my career path for the utmost better um but yeah I, I was really taken aback by even people reaching out to me and saying you know you, you saved my life I that's a that's a really heavy responsibility and it wasn't something that I realized I had yeah. it wasn't the position I realized I had taken at the time I was just enjoying creating with Amalia and and playing with our chemistry and I was just doing my job doing what I love as as a creator and as an artist and it wasn't you know, well, it wasn't until it was given to the world that I, I realized the amount of responsibility and power that it it came with, yeah. um, which I'm so grateful for. But I think it's not to be abused. Um, so, it's something that I'm very mindful of going forward. And um, I'm so proud of our show. I'm so proud of myself and all of us and all of the viewers and the community that's sort of come together, like the Twitter community. I it's just like Twitter. that's my safe space. Yeah. It's, it is. It's my favorite social media. Everything else I, I don't really care for. Um, but Twitter, is it's a safe space. It's where people can talk about how they feel and what they love. And and it, it's just beautiful to watch complete strangers find that, find that unity and, you know, without having to feel like you're giving up privacy or giving parts of yourself. You can just neutrally be yourself and be loved and accepted and the friendships that it's brought is just uh, I, I'm literally gonna get emotional because it's just so like I'm just so moved by it I mean it's such you have had a hand in building such a gorgeous community like I'm in a discord server with like 200 or more people who are just fans of the show and it's the most gorgeous thing in the world there's a there's different channels for different safe spaces for people to talk about things. People who have never had like the opportunity to interact with uh, like-minded people, other queer people. It's, you have done, I'm also getting emotional. You have done such a, <laughs> such, you have helped to heal wounds that are like hundreds of years old, right? So I was gonna ask, um, we've sort of fallen into this where I was going to talk about um, the fact that queer people have been forced to sit through uncomfortable representations of queerness since the Hays Codes and then when they came in, in the 30s. Um, for anyone who's listening, you probably know, but the Hays Codes were um, a set of production guidelines that came in to censor content by the Catholic Church that essentially made homosexuality, amongst other things, um, immoral. Um, and as a queer person, it was so rough um, for the community to see themselves as villains or being killed just over and over again. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm just like, I'm just so grateful for this. And it's like, I, I'm just not sure how much longer we're going to be doing it. So I'm just enjoying every moment of it. And 
as much as it saved other people, it saved me, which is to have that, you know, symbiotic relationship with complete strangers. It's just so moving to me, and I'm just so grateful for this period of my life and for the work that you're doing. Brilliant, brilliant work. You know, you're. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the work that you're doing, like, honestly, it's just. I'm incredibly grateful for this community. I'm incredibly grateful for you. I'm incredibly grateful for the show. Um, that's a, that's enough crying. That's enough crying. Oh yeah, I have to prepare for. I gotta save these for season three, guys, because we all know <laughs> you would like. Jeez. Have you still got your gigantic water bottle? I broke it, so I ordered another one on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's in, my, it's in my cart. I'm trying to find, like, I'm trying, don't tell anyone. I'm trying, I try not to give all my money to Jeff Bezos. So I'm trying to find, like, all these little shops out there. I'm trying to find someone who makes a water bottle big enough <laughs> from, like, a smaller company yeah. that I can give my money to. Yeah. So it's in my cart for Amazon, but for now, I'm just using my mom's, like, Costco, Costco yeah. one, because the other one broke. But yeah. Cool. So if you guys actually, if anyone has any links to someone I can support that makes insanely massive water bottles the size of infants, that would be awesome. Please send me the link. I'd love to know where to buy one. You're going to get sent like just hundreds of links. <laughs> I, just, love like, I love it. Absolutely. Perfect. Yes. Um, so we talked a little bit about the fans. So this show means the absolute world to the fans. I'm not sure if you know, but fans have currently donated over $2,000 uh, to get billboards put up in Los Angeles and New York through December, um, promoting <laughs> promoting the show before season three. Um, oh my God, guys, yeah, it's madness. Um, there's fan art, there's Twitter campaigns, there's videos. Even if you don't see all of it, the fans are fighting so hard to get you guys moved to streaming. Um, they're fighting with Storm and Fury right now, just hurricanes, just all over the shop, just really, really getting people moving. Um, if uh, because obviously the fans are going to hear all of this. Are there any messages that you want to send to the fan base? I, I can't. I, <laughs> thank you. Um, please don't spend money on that, guys. <laughs> um, donate it somewhere that me it means something to you. Please don't spend money on us. It's <laughs> um, your... But I the, think they're doing it because the show means so much to them, you know. I know, what I mean? it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the being vocal is is the biggest the biggest step we can take. Um that's that's really what they listen to is just persistence. If we're really fucking annoying, someone might hear us. Is what it, yeah. it's yeah. my life motto, you know? Um, <laughs> Same, honestly. <laughs> just keep um, talking. Yeah, so I, I just like I I'm so, um, emotional um swung right now um, the fact that people take time out of their day and money that they've worked for to it blows my mind I don't I I don't get it I mean guys I don't get it we're not worth it <laughs> that's not true at all. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm shutting that down. That's not yeah. you at all. <laughs> um, thank you. You're the reason we get up every day and we get to create. Um, I'm so happy to be on a team with you guys. Um, I love you. Um, every day I go on Twitter to, to just <laughs> see what you guys are up to and see what you're thinking. Um, whether I respond or not, I'm watching all of you, and they know that. They think I have a secret account. They but they're do. Just, I've seen that. It's so obvious. They, they think they give me way too much credit. Like, I was like, guys, I'm so dumb. Like, this year, like, this last year, I got cheated on, and I had to have, like, a friend of a friend tell me. Because I didn't oh even know. Oh, God. That's how they were like, you realize, like, this person still has, like, pictures and connections to their partner, and, like, they're, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. They're like, yeah, they're still with there. And I was like, oh, okay, well, um, that's how t t horribly technology technologically <laughs> at a disadvantage I am. Like, I'm so, you give me way too much credit. Just let me assure you, um, you really make the work easy for me. Like, I click on someone's username and then I scroll down a little and they're like, 
they just don't at me. And I'm like, guys, like I can, you make it so easy. And they're tweeting at someone else and they're like, don't tell Taylor. I'm like, I'm tagged in this. <laughs> and so I click on that and I'm like, what are they, what are they talking about? What are they talking smack yeah. on? And it's yeah. like a picture of me or Amalia dressed as Twilight characters or something. And they're like, you're going to scare them away. Don't show them this. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, it really is a safe space for me. It's a place that I go when I'm feeling sad or unsure of myself or I'm thinking low of myself um, or feel like really alone and I feel like I don't have anyone to connect to. It's it's a place I look to often. Um, so thank you. I hope I hope we always have that regardless of anything. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, as much as we both or you know, both aspects enjoy the show i i think that it's so much deeper than that and we you know we're it, we're in it for life and yeah. regardless Absolutely. where all of us end up you know so I, I i know that i still have you guys so thank you oh yeah no your fans that have connected to you are your fans for life like there's no <laughs> there's no doubt about that like that's absolutely just that's the thing is like we're like we're all not even fans of the show anymore we're just fans of each other as people which is so much so valuable to me and yeah. i cherish it so deeply that's sort of all of my questions that i've got but i did want to play a little game with you if that is um, okay is this a memory <laughs> test yeah it absolutely is yeah. oh thank you you knew you're like i'm gonna embarrass taylor watch this see that was not a hundred percent it but it was also a little bit <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm basically going to say you're a line. Right. They're all from season two, and they're all the more sort of iconic ones. Um, okay. So I'm gonna a line. S- Pardon? You're going to say a line? Yeah, I'm going to say a line, and then you say what the response was or what the next line was. Oh, shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the first one, I can also tell you the character, if that will Okay. Help. Yeah. Please do. Please yeah. do. Okay, so the first one is Petra talking. And it's, I hear Gregorio Shellbuck is in high demand. That's because he's a safety school with a penis. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's one of my favorite ones, too, so I'll remember that. Yeah, same. It's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> when I heard that, when I was watching, I was like... <laughs> I literally choked. Like, what you're seeing is a live reaction. I mean, you even go like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> live reaction. Uh, okay, so the next one. Um, I'd rather be someone who stands up for what they believe in than old as puppet. And that's Scylla. Uh oh, spaghetti. <laughs> I can also give you context for the line if you'd like. Maybe. Yeah. So context. you're in you're in the cabin and you're fighting. Can you read the line one more time? I'd rather be someone who stands up for what they believe in than old as puppet. Oh, I remember. Rael saying, shut your mouth, you murderer. Well, what comes after that? Doggone it. <laughs> uh, that's all I can remember is shut your mouth, murderer. I should have strangled you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's always my own lines that that dupe me. You just blacked out during your lines. <laughs> I was not going to remember that. That is That's traumatic. The look on her face, she was like. <laughs> she looked like a, there was so many moments in that episode where you, she looked like a kicked puppy, and it was just like literally it was like a, a little baby. Yeah, you know what? You know, a little baby. Every, like, Stella at all costs. Yeah, she's our baby. Um, okay, this one's probably the hardest one. Um, so it's all good if you don't get it. Um, and it's important the way that I say it. So, hey, Camaria, and it's Abigail. What? It's all I could think of. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. That's Tally. Yeah. It's something like that. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Is that it? Really? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I remember laughing at that. Hey, Camaria! We were all like, <laughs> like, actually off camera. Yeah. Hey, Camaria. What? It's all I could think of. We're like, that's Jess. That's not even Tally. Yeah. It was so just like, it was so cute. So wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one has two possible answers, so you can okay. do either. One of them's you, so you might not remember that one. <laughs> um, okay, so 
sorry. Um, so stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. Do I say that? Yes. I do. Isn't that Tessilla? Doesn't she just say you too? Or yeah, perfect. Yeah, you, you too? too. Perfect. You too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I've well done. that one. Oh, God. I got it. Because it yeah. wasn't actually my line that I had to remember. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, great. Um, the other option was uh, Quinn and Tally saying how, <laughs> which is just very, ooh. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. I actually remember that. Yeah. That's a really cool scene as well. I love Quinn with my whole heart. She really feels like an elevated like de developed version of Rael. You can definitely see parts of Rael that, you know, shows that she was part raised by Quinn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have a really, really special connection. I love, love their dynamic. Um, okay, the last one I think should be the easiest. And also you're not remembering your own line. Um, so the line that I'm gonna say is Rael. Um, so I don't wanna be apart from you anymore. Isn't it just me either? No. What is it? Oh no! This is the easiest. Okay, maybe maybe safety school with the penis was the easiest, but the easiest. <laughs> um fuck. I don't know. It's... Read it one more time. I don't want to be to apart me. from you anymore. I I know where they are, and I, I remember looking at Amalia and saying this line, vividly remember this. I don't remember what she said in return because her eye color is very distracting. <laughs> we were outside too, like when we're outside, her eyes are just crazy. Like who can blame me? Come on, I, I literally no, I take agree. no fault. It's not even my fault. I wasn't, I was out of body. It wasn't me. <laughs> I can't remember. You're the biggest simpy simp for Amalia. You just join everyone. <laughs> Team Sam. Team Sam for Amalia. I don't know. I don't know why. I think it's you were me. you were partly right. It was it was me either like ever. Me either like ever. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Distracting. I tell you, it's not my fault. Yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely I have no valid. Ability for what for the effect of her eyes. I take zero. That's her fault. <laughs> her fault you know what it's her fault i can't remember hang on um, that's it so <laughs> thank you so much for thank you. for um, we're doing this again post season three because this is just too much fun that was literally what i was gonna ask you so i'm so glad <laughs> you're hey, hey, hey. Hey. Yay. Hey. <laughs> um yeah Good luck filming season three. Um, I Thank hope that you, it, I will need it. Yeah, it'll, <laughs> you won't need it. You'll be all good. Um, we know that like, oh, yeah. you're going to crush it. Like there's no pressure, like, but like we Bless. know whatever you do is going to crush it. We all trust you and trust Elliot. And again, trust Elliot in this house. Like we're here for I'm it. Fate, guys. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Oh, okay. um, yeah, we got this. You got this. Absolutely. Um, for anyone listening, please remember to stream Motherland Fort Salem on Disney Plus in Australia. Hulu, if you're in the States, I think it's Disney Plus in Canada as well. It is. Yes, yeah. it is Disney Plus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll do this again after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. Ah. Thanks, Anne. Take care. No worries. Be See safe. Ya.